From bubblegum pink lakes to nature's door to hell, here are some places the Earth acts in mysterious ways. Number 8. The Mixing of the Oceans The Earth is made up of about three-fourths water, a fact we've all known since grade school. If you look at a map, you'd think all of the planet's oceans are connected to each other, like there's only one giant ocean and people just named different areas. You may think because it's all water that they just flow into one another with no issue or barrier or edge. But in fact, there are hard lines where you can see the end of one ocean and the beginning of another. It's amazing how vivid these lines actually are. A great example of this is what happens between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. The result is a wonderful visual. It really looks like two very different oceans going up against one another, and an invisible force won't let them connect. And that's because there is one. Kind of. What's interfering with the water mixing? Well, not only do the oceans have very different names, they actually have completely different water too. The Pacific and Atlantic Oceans have very different chemical makeup, like density and levels of salinity. When freshwater and saltwater meet, but have that invisible force not allowing them to meet, we call that an oceancline, or a halocline. It's a Greek word. Halo means salt, and klein means slope or graduation. It's where the higher freshwater, that has fallen as rain, meets the lower salt water that comes in from the sea. A halocline is defined as the level where the amount of dissolved salt changes sufficiently enough to be able to see it. You can see from the difference in color that the oceans clearly are not the same. That's why oceans are known as salt water and rivers, for the most part, are fresh water because they don't have as much salt in them and are usually safer to drink. Because of the different locations, temperatures, weather patterns, life forms, and more that lie within and around various oceans, the salinity of each is different. Jacques Cousteau was the famous explorer to discover this border between the two oceans when he was deep sea diving. You might wonder, just how salty does it have to be to make one of these holoclines? The water in one ocean or sea has to be at least five times saltier than in the other. These holoclines or ocean clines are the clearest way of noticing that the oceans aren't truly mixing. There are several myths about what was truly going on because this was so spectacular and so weird. Believe it or not, there's even more science that leads to these ocean clines. But for now, just note that if you do see a picture like this of oceans bashing one another and not mixing, it's not a myth or a fake image. It's a real thing and a mysterious product of our world. Number seven, the depths of the ocean. Despite the ocean being so large and taking up so much room, it's also one of the most unexplored environments. We know remarkably little about the deep ocean. In fact, we know more about the surface of the moon than we do about the ocean floor. The ocean, in many ways, is another world, and the deeper you go, the stranger and more mysterious it gets. How deep does it go? The ocean is huge and difficult to study. If you search online to find the depth of the ocean, you may end up with a range of results. We do know that the ocean is much deeper than Mount Everest is high. Deep sea biologists have been trying to explore further and further, but the pressure of the ocean gets more powerful the deeper you go. So powerful that if any human dared to go down without the proper and very expensive diving equipment, they'd be crushed like a tin can. Not only is the pressure this intense, there is also the disappearance of light. The light from our sun can only reach so far. This means that any creatures in the ocean that go a certain distance down will be living in pitch black and freezing waters. Once we venture past the zone where light penetrates the ocean, the dark depths of the sea are filled with strange and captivating critters like the anglerfish and the vampire squid. What other aquatic life lurks below? waiting to be discovered. This is a major reason why many are dedicated to exploring the ocean, because there are still so many curiosities that we don't fully understand. What kind of creatures do you think could be down there? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're new to the channel, welcome! Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe for more videos like these. Number 6. Breathing Earth In Quebec, there was a very unusual sighting found. 
A man was just on a normal day hike when he found a spot where the earth looked like it was actually breathing. By breathing, we refer to how there was a rhythmic flow of the earth going up and down in a certain spot, not unlike a lung expanding and then shrinking when it gets air inhaled into it. This clip went viral on the internet and many explanations were given, including it was because of an earthquake, gases that were mounting underneath that spot and more. When I saw the video, my imagination immediately thought of a sleeping giant under the earth, but sadly, that's not the answer. So what is the true answer behind this? Curiously, it was a case of the earth just shifting violently in place. But surely, we would have seen something like this before then, right? Well, not exactly. It's all about the terrain and what's in said terrain. The key here is the trees and the wind. If you look at the clip showing the breathing earth, and focus on the trees, you'll notice that the wind is blowing very heavily in this spot. Experts confirmed that the kind of trees in the video are known to have very long roots, ones that expand in all directions, including under the earth where the pulsating happened. When the wind blew against these trees, it made the roots move and thus raised the earth. When the ground is loose enough and the wind sufficiently strong, it can cause trees to sway back and forth, pulling at the web of roots and loosening the surrounding soil. This is what makes the ground appear to breathe with life. In short, the intense force of the winds caused the roots to shift in such a way that it looked like rhythmic breathing due to the rising of the gusts. Pretty unique, huh? So, sorry, no sleepy giants. This phenomenon was even shown on the Weather Channel in their show, Weird Earth, where the scientists further talked about how this happened. Number five, liquefaction. Liquefaction is a phenomenon in which the strength and stiffness of a soil is reduced by earthquake shaking or other rapid loading. Intense vibrations cause soil particles below the ground to lose contact with each other, transforming the once solid ground into a liquefied state. This can also look like the earth breathing. Again, not a sleepy giant. Think of it like this. When you go on a walk outside your home, you know that you can walk on the ground because it's solid, right? However, in events like an earthquake, the literal seismic shifting that is going on beneath your feet literally causes the ground to lose cohesion. It'll stop acting like a solid, and instead, it'll become a very warped liquid-like substance. A great example of this was when an earthquake happened in Tokyo, Japan in 2011 that caused massive amounts of water to wreak havoc. However, the water wasn't the only damage, as the roads and other parts of the city very far from the oceans started to rise up and shift because of the change in the state. Liquefaction and related phenomena have been responsible for tremendous amounts of damage in historical earthquakes around the world. Now, to be clear, water can lead to liquefaction if it's saturated enough, but there have been many cases where this is not a requirement and thus is something that many look out for when an earthquake hits. Number four, door to hell. Some places on earth can be a little creepy and sometimes downright hellish. The Darvaza gas crater, nicknamed by locals the door to hell or the gates of hell, definitely seems hellish. The sinister burning flames located in the Karakum Desert of central Turkmenistan is a fiery pit that attracts hundreds of tourists each year. How did this hot inferno happen? In 1971, when the Republic was still part of the Soviet Union, a group of Soviet geologists went to this desert in search of oil fields. They found what they thought to be a substantial oil field and began drilling. Unbeknownst to the scientists, they were drilling on top of a cavernous pocket of methane, a natural gas, which could not support the weight of all their equipment. The site collapsed and took the equipment with it, and a massive crater 230 feet wide was born. That's not the end to the story though. The gas started to leak into the air, so the Soviets decided to strike a match, so to speak, and burn the methane out. Unfortunately for them, not only did it not work, the crater is still on fire. That's right, it's still burning to this day. 47 years later, the fire burns and people keep going to get a glimpse of what might be in the great beyond. What's mysterious about this place is rather obvious it's still burning. Theoretically speaking, the gases in the pocket should have burned out by now, and yet it hasn't. Thus, none can say when it will truly die out. Number three, disappearing beaches. 
In truth, there are cases of disappearing beaches that are all too common. In fact, climate change is a major reason for this, as the rising ocean levels mean that the waters of the world are getting higher, and what used to be a wide swath of sand is now consumed by water. However, that's not the only kind of disappearing beach. In Australia, in 2018, there was a beach in Queensland that literally went from being totally fine to, well, not. In fact, a massive hole ripped open and swallowed a large section of the popular beach. The day before this happened, there were people hanging out here, enjoying the sun. But early in the day, on the 24th of September, a mysterious hole opened up and the tide started consuming the earth at an alarming rate. The hole reached all the way to the tree line and is an estimated 650 to 1,000 feet across and 25 feet deep. Experts call this a nearshore landslip. Why did this happen? Due to the construction of the beach, the waters had been eroding away at the earth and soil there. Weathering occurs at different rates, and in this case, the parameters were met for the earth to collapse into the waters, and that led to a rush of more water, creating an even bigger hole as more and more land eroded away. A Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service spokesperson said, it was likely the erosion was caused by the undermining of part of the shoreline by tidal flow, waves, and currents. When this occurs below the waterline, the shoreline loses support and a section slides seaward, leaving a hole, the edges of which retrogress back towards the shore, the statement added. Beachgoers are now instructed not to go near that spot in case more erosion happens. Number two, the Pink Lake of Australia. We learn at a young age that water is blue, sometimes greenish blue, sometimes a muddy bluish green. You know what I'm saying. But sometimes mother nature throws us a curveball. This is what she did with Lake Hillier in Australia. This lake is unlike any other lake in the world. Why? Because it's pink. Nope, this is not an illusion. There are actually a number of pink lakes all over the world. Researchers recently discovered that the lake's unique bright bubblegum color is caused by algae, halobacteria, and other microbes. Additionally, this body of water is extremely salty, just as salty as the Dead Sea, which also adds to this pink magic. Unlike other lakes, however, which regularly change colors in accordance with temperature fluctuations, Lake Hillier maintains its pink shade year round. The water even retains its rosy hue when in a glass or a bottle. This lake isn't very big, less than 2,000 feet or 600 meters, and only about 820 feet or 250 meters wide, and actually looks even smaller when you get an aerial view of it next to the ocean, which is close by, only separated by a thin band of trees and plants on sand dunes. Number one, seismic fissures. When you hear the word seismic, you likely think of seismic activity, such as earthquakes, which is fair. But there is another aspect of this in the form of seismic fissures, which are literally cracks in the earth that can happen at random times and in random places. Like in 2005, when a 35 mile wide fissure opened up in Ethiopia, it wasn't caused by an earthquake. Rather, many think it was caused by a nearby volcano eruption. Further study into this now leads many to believe that this crack is just the first of many that will lead to a new ocean being made that will swallow the Red Sea and any land within its reach. Another one of these fissures happened in 2011 in Michigan, and that wasn't caused by an earthquake or a volcano, but apparently a massive and random upheaval of the earth below. There are many who think that cracks like this could continue as climate change grows. Thanks for watching. What did you think of these places the earth acts in mysterious ways? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.